Hey guys, this is Odd One Gaming. This is going to be another Dragonair Salon Gods video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Ancient Battlefield, and I want to show a team that's pretty fun and honestly, I think it's pretty relatable because I'm not going to be using all legendaries, all OP legendaries, inspired and whatnot because I don't have that. You know, my account, I guess you could classify as a low spender one. So usually whatever I, I show is, is uh, going to be content that's either going to be completely free to play with just, you know, rares or epics that everybody can obtain. Or I will be using a little bit of my legendaries, but, you know, some of them might be free legendaries, like it's going to be in this case. The reason I want to show this uh, team today is because obviously we still have the Shadow Dungeon going on right now. And this time around we have to farm the Ancient Battlefield. Be careful about this one, there's still 2 days and 14 hours. If you started on uh, day one of global launch till this event ends, so keep in mind, grab all of the ones that you can from here, do as much as you can from the continental challenges, and then see if you have enough and you want to pull in order to get UTR, maybe go ahead and do that. If not, just grab your rewards, you know, grab whatever you can from here, and it is what it is. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're gonna come, maybe UTR is gonna come back around next time, but I personally will try and get him because I want to have him for the sake of content. But anyway. Let's go into the battle and let me show you the team that I am using, which honestly, that's the best I, I could find for what I tested. That can speed farm it, in a sense, you know, the this stage 9. And what I mean by speed farm, I mean I'm not going to take the whole 5-6 minutes, as I showed the previous videos, but it's going to be a team that is under 2 minutes, okay? The thing that I want to mention from the beginning, this team is not going to be 100%. There is still RNG involved. If certain debuffs do not land, it can fail. So let's let's have a quick run while I'm talking through this. And, you know, maybe maybe we're going to have, as usual, whenever I try to show something, the first one usually fails. So let's see. Am I going to keep the same, uh, the same theme of, like, getting the bad RNG and fail it or not? Let's see. Okay, so far, so good. So, the way that this team revolves is basically trying to control the boss, and it, I do have preset set. I'm going to show you that as well, but the whole idea is, and the way that I want to have this team, you saw that I have some skills that I kept and did not use, but what I want to do are two things. First, land the attack penalty with floor boss before the boss does this one, okay? This is the biggest smack. <clears throat> but at the same time, that's also when I'm using Voresh's buff prohibition, okay? The reason why I'm trying I do it there is because if I do it close to when he does the ultimate, it's also gonna stop the boss from putting that attack up. If he gets the attack up, or if I do not land the attack penalty and he does that ultimate hit, I'm basically dead. So that that's that's the way this one goes. Because he hits so hard. And the people I have in here are built to do damage, to so obviously to try and speed farm it. We cannot take those big smacks. But yeah, that's the first two things. Landing attack penalty before the ultimate and the buff prohibition with... Uh, okay, attack down did not land. And this is what happens. I guess uh, my my bad RNG continues. My, my bad RNG continues, so we just have to run it again because it is what it is. Unfortunately, there's that uh, thing of... I guess it's... I'm not sure if it's 3%. I know in Raid Shadow Legends... There is a 3% chance that you do not land the debuffs, even though I have enough accuracy, because I require 220. I have 220 on him, but I also have the bonus from the 3-man affinity, another 50. So, you know, it's just RNG. Anyway, because it's a 2-minute run, I don't really mind uh, the runs being, you know, failing, because you do not lose energy. So that's, that's a good thing. You do not lose stamina, even if the runs fail. So, I do not mind that. I just either just keep clicking it to run it again, or... I use my auto battles, which I have, and I just keep, you know, keep going with that. So the first two things, like I said, attack penalty and uh, buff prohibition from Frurbath and Voresh. They're only epics, but they are the top tier epics. So I guess, you know, they can, it can be related, but it can be not. Depends on the luck, you know, depends if you pull them or not. Then the next one that's really important in this team is going to be the healer that you have at the back. Okay, so whoever's going to be the furthest in your team should be somebody that has high resistance. Because when the boss does this hit, he's going to try and attempt to stun the person that's the furthest. Okay, if the stun, stun lands, you're not going to have the backfire from the boss. But if the, uh, the stun does not land or it lands but you cleanse it... The boss will enter the backfire, which means he's going to take more damage. And that's obviously going to be good as we're going to take it down faster. So I chose to use Hexandra because why not? You know, she's a good healer. She does a decent amount of healing in here. And I guess I could also use maybe somebody like a V Cook or something better. But at the end of the day, why use an epic or a legendary when I can just use a rare? You know, Hexandra does her job just fine. 
<clears throat> and then the last two spots over here, honestly, these two ones can be anybody. These two ones can be your best damage dealers that you have. However, keep in mind, don't bring damage dealers that give them that get buffs. So don't bring uh, stuff like rally or don't bring any other DPS to buff themselves, attack or other stuff like that. If they have shields, that's fine. Shields do not count as buffs. But if it's anything else, just don't bring it as the boss's damage is going to keep improving every time he removes your buffs. So keep that in mind. But yeah, it, it seen luckily we got a successful one. <laughs> I didn't get all the bad RNG. I did have the defense penalty in all and a few times, but it's still fine. You see, 148, my best time is 136. Usually I do it at around 140, 136, depending on how the debuffs land and whatnot. So <clears throat> yeah, this team should be honestly pretty obtainable. It's kind of like it has a, a few mechanics that you definitely need to control. That's why this one, kind uh, it kind of limits you on what you can bring to the fight because like i said you need to cover the stun target which is the person in the back you need to have attack penalty before he does this big smack because it's gonna hit really hard and you need to have buff prohibition not necessarily where i do it you want to have it before the boss puts the attack up over here okay on this spot but the reason why i'm doing it over here okay one second it seems like i was on the bad scene okay there we go <laughs> the reason why i do it over here is because if I land it just before the boss does this part, he's not going to get defense up and he's not going to get attack up either. So it lands perfectly as the uh, the buff prohibition that uh, Voresh lands is for 10 seconds. And basically from here to this one is 5 seconds plus another 4, that's 9. So it's always going to be up if I land it exactly the right time. It's always going to be up for the increased defense and for the increased attack of the boss to be blocked. And that makes it better because obviously... If he has increased defense, you're going to do less damage. If he has if he has increased attack, you're just going to die, basically. <laughs> but yeah, I really like this team because, like I said, well, it's, I guess, mostly... It, I, I could call it no legendaries because, well, everybody gets average. So he's kind of like a free one. You can get anybody else in there. Like I said, average and tunnel on the, do not have to be them. But I chose to go with them because they formed a synergy with, uh, with Frurbath and with Hexandra. So we can get the extra stats and make make ourselves a little bit tanky and get more damage. But after this one ends, I'm going to show a little bit the presets because it's really important to have the timings, at least for Furbath and Voresh. These are really important because you definitely want to land the stuff at the right time. So you see 140 again, 136, like I mentioned. But if we check the, the skill timings, I have both Frurbath and Voresh land their stuff at 17.5 seconds, okay? The reason I'm doing that is... That's going to be half a second before the boss does his ultimate. So I want to have the attack penalty and also I want to have the buff prohibition. And then after that, I made them reuse it every 18 seconds. So they use it exactly at the same time. Obviously, in order to do that, you have to make sure that this one, the complete recharge time is going to be at 18 seconds exactly or lower. Otherwise, this is not going to work. OK, this is not going to work properly. You're going to see the exception here that, okay, Furbot doesn't have it at 18.8. .8. Well, that's because I have a, an artifact on him that makes him go at the right time. Then when it comes to Erich and Tunnelon, when the thing that I did is, <coughs> sorry, the thing that I did is I just made them go after Voresh goes. So there's going to be the, hopefully there's going to be the defense penalty down there and then that should help us. So now let's have a look at the builds. So first one. Through boss, he's basically with uh, defense mostly, and I do have him in the three set Brotherhood Spirit, so he puts the increase attack on all allies because obviously that's going to help. It's going to help us to do more damage. I have 32 skill haste on him, but what makes him come back to his ultimate fast enough is this one. The Spiritual Incense Burner. Increases the wearer's ultimate energy by a certain percent after unleashing their ultimate. So basically he does his ultimate, his uh, ultimate energy just goes up a bit higher, which makes him, as you saw, come back to this always in time. So that's uh, that's the fruit bath build, just accuracy and then defense so he can heal from his battle skill. I'm obviously also using his defense aura to survive the hits. <clears throat> then I have Orash that I'm using with the Witch's Remains. If you do not have Witch's Remains, you can always use the Crown because, you know, it's going to be this, it's going to be almost the same thing. It has a higher chance to land the Crown, but it, it's only it's going to be the lower version. It's still going to help. I just obviously use the bigger version because that's what I have. I want to speed run it. 
And then I have him with lots of skill haste. Basically what you need is you need to have over 55 skill haste from what I noticed if you have around 20 uh, seconds complete recharge time. If you have 20 seconds complete recharge time and then on them and you have around 55 skill haste or more, it's always gonna have, it's gonna always gonna take this down to 18 seconds, which means it's gonna fall in sync properly. So the reason, like, I have so much skill haste because I have one set of the Brotherhood Spirit, one set of Wrath of the Troll, and then obviously I gave him as much skill haste as I could, enough accuracy, even overkill accuracy actually to land his debuffs, and then as much damage as I could. So he brings some damage so we can take the boss down faster. Then we have Hexandra with resistance. Like I said, she needs to have, I think it's somewhere around 280, maybe 300. I'm not exactly sure the amount, but you know, I would say go to around 280 resist. So you can resist the boss's stun and make him go into that backfire so you can do more damage. And then she's also in the ancestral protection. So she soaks up some of that damage from the squisher champs, which are going to be the DPS. And then everything about her is like some enlightenment, resistance, defense percent with resistance, defense percent. So I just made her to be tanky, okay? You can try and give her more attack and enlightenment so she heals more from the battle skill. But if she's going to be too squishy, you might risk it. So, you know, just play around with your build, see how it works. But make sure the priority number one is going to be to have the resistance on her. And then number two, she survives, you know, number two, she survives because mostly this is the important heal and this one scales off of the target's max HP so you cannot boost the heal of her ultimate. And now what, what's left? What's left? The last ones are going to be our DPS. Erich, I have him with the eyeball and just straight up damage as much crit rate as I could with crit damage. He's in the three set executioner with crit rate, crit damage, then again, more crit rate, more crit damage, more attack, crit damage over here. Defense over here because I saw that he was a bit squishy and was taking too much damage, so just give him defense. If you don't need that and if you survive, give him more attack. Obviously, again, test it, see how it works for you. If you die, just give a bit more survivability. And then on ton on same thing, executioner set for damage with crit damage gloves, attack percent chest with more crit damage, crit damage over here, attack over here, and... I like to run the uh, arcane music box on him, not because of the effect, because we have no shield in this team specifically, but <clears throat> I like it because it gives me extra 30% crit rate. That's a lot, especially if you pair it with his passive, that gives him 20 more uh, crit rate as well. You basically only need to give him a, uh, a total of 50% crit rate from the gear, which makes it obviously a lot easier to just get some crit rate substats from the gear and from the runes, and you should be just fine. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess... This is going to be it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this gives you some ideas of maybe trying to get some speed far teams yourself for the ancient battlefield to farm it as soon as possible and as fast as possible so that you can keep progressing your account. But anyway, this is going to be it for the video today, guys. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.